The project starts with listening to people's stories, not only about issues in their community, that too, but really what their dreams and aspirations are. Initially, when I ask people about that, they look at me, as I said, as if I'm from Mars. They have repressed, as it were, those dreams and aspirations because the day-to-day -day search for security, for safety, for food have taken over. But they're there. And I think that is a resource because that will be the building blocks for a community of hope. Welcome to episode 148 of Be The Drop, a weekly interview podcast sharing stories from people who inspire and motivate others to help you learn how to tell your story. I'm Amelia Veal, Director at Narrative Marketing and firm believer in the superpower of storytelling. June is a significant time for business. Preparing for end of financial year may seem tedious and difficult. However, this pales in comparison to the challenges faced by our homeless population on cold and wet winter nights. This year was my fourth year participating in the CEO Sleepout, which to me is an opportunity to be part of something that raises both funds and awareness for the vulnerable in our community. The St Vincent de Paul Society, often referred to as Vinnies, is an organisation giving the Australian homeless population a hand up, not a hand out. With 60,000 members and volunteers in Australia, Vinnies has helped change lives of those in need since 1854. In today's episode of Be The Drop, I speak to a number of participants and volunteers at the CEO Sleepout. I share the stories and motivations from some of the people who are passionately and actively working to help reduce homelessness so that we can consider what other things we could do to help support this worthy cause. This is Be The Drop, live from the CEO Sleepout. Before we dive into today's podcast episode, I would like to take a moment to say a huge heartfelt thanks to all the generous people who donated to my fundraising for the CEO Sleepout. Together, you helped me raise over $4,000 for this valuable cause. If you haven't yet donated but would like to, it's not too late. Head to the CEO Sleepout website, www.ceosleepout.org.au and search for Amelia Veal in the search bar. All donations, big and small, are greatly appreciated and help make a difference. Participating in the CEO Sleepout in the cold conditions and sleeping on a thin piece of cardboard is a very tangible reminder of how truly fortunate I am. It's also a great opportunity to talk to many other inspirational people who are passionate about helping others and making a difference in the lives of people in need. It's a humbling experience. One of those people is Mario Trinidad, who volunteers with Vinnies and is doing incredible work for some of the most poverty-stricken people in the country. I'm Mario Trinidad, the leader of what's called the Community Capacity Building Team. We work uh, specifically in Elizabeth South. And you just gave us a presentation which was very much focused about establishing hope and dreams and aspirations for people. Can you tell us a little bit about the project and why that's so important? The project starts with listening to people's stories not only about issues in their community, that too, but really what their dreams and aspirations are. Initially, when I ask people about that, they look at me, as I said, as if I'm from Mars. They have repressed, as it were, those dreams and aspirations because the day-to-day -day search for security, for safety, for food have taken over. But they're there. And I think that is a resource because that will be the building blocks for a community of hope. Which is wonderful. And so this is obviously focused around Elizabeth South, yes. which has got high instances of poverty and has been for generations. Can you tell us about the impacts of that? Elizabeth South is, according to the uh, ABS census, the most socioeconomically disadvantaged metropolitan suburb, next only to the APY lands. And that has generated 
all other issues, domestic violence, uh, drug addiction, and that's what we want to work on. It is important that the people themselves of Elizabeth South come up with their own understanding of their own situation and come up with their own solutions. And my task is to facilitate the rediscovery of their own dreams so that they can take the initiative to build a community of hope, uh, a, a secure community, a safe community, a healthy community. All that currently is still in embryo, if you like. Sooner or later, there will be a conflagration of hope. <laughs> I love it. And what a wonderful program. And I like that, you know, you're really going and empowering the people, asking them the questions, asking them to take control, because they're in this poverty cycle, which is disempowering. Right. Because what happens often with people in poverty, others who are not in poverty decide what solutions there would be to their poverty. And then when the programs fail, then they get blamed, and the more they're caught up in that quicksand of hopelessness. But that's really, uh, I think, the challenge for organizations like St. Vincent de Paul that uh, want to be of assistance to these people. The first assistance we can offer is to listen to their stories, because in their stories are the gems of a solution. Thank you so much, Mario. You're welcome. I am often curious about what drives people to give so generously of their time. Why are they so passionate about volunteering for Vinnie's? I'm also curious about what's involved in this volunteering and what is it like to be an open ear to people who need it. To find out, I spoke to Claire Victory, the Vinnie's National Council President. And not only are you the national president, but you're the first female and the youngest. Is that right? Uh, yes, it is. So what is it that drove you to get involved in this organisation? Well, I got involved when I was a kid and I've got my mum to thank. She actually wanted uh, some of us kids to, I guess, stay involved with our, our parish when we were leaving our parish primary school and going off to different schools. So she wanted to keep us connected. So it was partly social. It was partly about fundraising for the local Vinnies group um, and also going out and, and being of service ourselves. So helping in the shop and visiting elderly people in their home. So Vinnies was there before my, my job was. It's just part of my life and who I am now. I, I've always liked helping people. And the reason I, I went into law and, and became a lawyer was ultimately to, to help people in one way or another and that guides most of the things that I that I do it's my vocation it's a driving force in my life and I like sort of supporting other people to, to do that as well so I guess that's why I'm, I'm still involved and why I keep finding ways to um, to try and be of service within this particular organization that I've come to you know love and, and feel is like a home to me so and what is it that you think is so important and valuable about Vinnie's um, I think it's really we do what we do um, in a non-judgmental way uh, and that we believe that personal companionship is really important. That it's not just about handing out material aid and, and you know, ticking boxes and, you know, saying, OK, you can come back in three months and we'll give you another food box or something like that. It's really about forming that personal connection with people and being someone that those people are talking to who's not chasing them up for, you know, money or debts or, you know, telling them that they need to go to more, you know, job appointments and all those sorts of things. You know, we're someone who can sit with people listen to them, share the, the sorrow that, that might be in their hearts or, or share share with them the hard times that they're going through, listen and just really sort of be that, that friendly face and that sort of companion uh, uh, to them. And I, I think that's, that's a, a fairly unique thing about what we do and that we go out to people's homes as well to do that or meet them where they are and, and using our experiences and what we learn about people's situations and what they're going through and why to help bring about positive change in the community through, you know, through greater structural change and, and that sort of thing. So that advocacy is really important as well. Yeah, so, and we've heard a lot tonight about raising awareness and helping understand to increase compassion yeah. that it's not a choice to be yeah. homeless, yeah. Um, that, you know, circumstances collide and situations happen. Yeah. In conclusion, though, so maybe if you can just talk about why it's so important to also just raise awareness yeah. of the human side. Well, it's important for a couple of reasons. People won't want to help if they truly believe, for example, that people are experiencing poverty or homelessness because it's their fault or because they've done something wrong or they're somehow morally deserving of, of that. The other reason it's important is that we ultimately want to make bigger change, Like, but ideally we'd like them not to be in poverty at all. And it's possible to make those changes, but that requires changes in government policy and that requires changes in people's minds and hearts so they understand the reason that people are living on the streets, for example, is because they cannot afford to live, they cannot afford housing. So what do we need to do about that? Well, we need to understand that things like, for example, the rate of income 
income support is woefully inadequate. We know that it's only about half of what you need to get by. We need people to understand the causes and the reality of poverty and homelessness so that they are compelled to help in whatever way, through the way that they vote, through their advocacy in the community, through their advocacy to politicians and through the day-to-day things they can do by donating goods, donating money, donating their time to help. The community at the CEO Sleepout have incredibly warm hearts. Two people that stood out to me at this year's event were young entrepreneurs James and Cameron. Through their startup, Cardigan's Humanity, they are on a mission to share their compassionate consumer choices with others. So tell me, explain, what is Cardigans? Is it Cardies Against Humanity? Well, well say that again. It's a spoof on the game Cards Against Humanity. We wanted to make an apparel line of Cardigans because Cardigans aren't getting the recognition they deserve currently. They're an undervalued <laughs> market. I love a Cardi. Obviously, I just auctioned one. Why did you decide to get involved in the CEO Sleepout? My dad was actually like searching the internet and saw it and we thought of it as a moment that we could walk the talk, you know, show that we're willing to be able to give now rather than asking a lot of other people to give, we should be able to give too. So obviously you've got a spirit where you want to donate and support. Where's that come from? Why is that important? Because we feel like everyone deserves to be treated equal and in this world, in this current day, it just doesn't happen. I think it runs in our bloodline as well. Our granddad is a bit of our, we're calling him our moral compass. So he's keeping us in check and he's always been a driving force behind the charitable aspect of it. Yeah, that's great. So, you know, it's re- there's a lot of family elements going on there. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, it definitely is. Yeah. And so we're both cousins too, so... We've always planned on doing something... Together? Yeah, together, yeah. So currently we're looking at the buy one cardigan and we'll donate one to someone in need or we can send the cardigan for you to send to someone in need yourself if you feel like you want to be the one that completes the deed is creating this new kind of way for people to express themselves to and what they want to put on their cardigans so yeah fantastic and what are you expecting from tonight so obviously you've just heard about it what are you thinking is going to happen yeah honestly i didn't expect half of what's happened tonight we've had a thousand and one conversations everyone's asking about them obviously we're wearing them tonight that's just the experience there's so many people that have experience in other businesses and fields that we can draw from and learn and if they're willing to give us just that little bit of information that's a big bonus for us. Thanks guys, look forward to talking to you more soon. As it started to get late, I wasn't the only one feeling the winter night chill. Fellow marketer Jason Neve was in for a particularly cold night, but he was hoping to stay warmed by the purpose and impact of his involvement. Okay, Jason, so you're obviously super prepped for tonight. Uh, you went to get your sleeping bag and um, I, did it shrink? No, well, uh, I came home from a work trip to Sydney and got in late last night, got up this morning to uh, get ready for the sleep out and my sleeping bag had been taken on school camp by one of my thieving children and uh, the only one left in the house was this uh, one that once upon a time belonged to one of my six-year-olds. <laughs> so I think it's called a leg warmer, not a sleeping bag. And I have photographic evidence, so when we share this episode, I'm going to share the photos so that so listeners can really appreciate the fact that it's probably about half your length. So this is your first CEO sleep out, and how are you going to solve this? Well, I'm begging pity uh, that I'll be accepted into another sleeping bag. Oh. <laughs> so things could get cosy here. Oh, yeah, spooning everywhere, for sure. <laughs> so tell me why you decided to get involved with the CEO sleep out. Uh, I was asked by Tim Seymour-Smith, who's got Cafe Outside the Square, and they do some awesome work for both Vinnie's and uh, the homeless and disadvantaged people in general. So um, he said, come and join the team, raise some money. I said, sure. And so other than being cold, what, you know, what are you expecting tonight? Pain, cold. Pretty first world problems done in the whirlwind compared yeah. to having to do it every night, right? Yeah, so. that's right. So then tell me, you know... If somebody would probably give their left leg for a sleeping bag like this, uh, even if that's all they could fit into it. Well, it has got a dinosaur on it. So tell me then, what have you learned? What sort of positives are coming out? Uh, just empathy and understanding that it's, it's not a choice that people make, of course, and living it one night like we're doing tonight, it's kind of glib, but we're doing it to raise money. If this does one small thing, then hopefully that's great, but I can you know, go and tell the kids about it as well and get them along next year. Fantastic. Having survived the night, which pales in the face of those who experience it every night, I couldn't help but feel more people should be involved in this experience. I decided to speak to a sleep out veteran, Angelique Boileau, and uncover the reasons she returns to the CEO sleep out each year. And we've just survived another CEO sleep out. How are you feeling this morning? 
defrosting. <laughs> and you, this, you have done every year since they've had the CEO sleepout in Adelaide, is that right? No, I think I missed out the first one. Okay. I think next year will be the 10th year for, for the CEO and it will be my ninth. This is obviously something you feel passionate about supporting. Why is that? I guess it's because I feel so fortunate and I feel so blessed. I just want to be able to give back some of that blessing to those that are less fortunate. Yeah, fantastic. And, you know, what is it about Vinnie's and this event that you think is a really valuable one? I think it's a valuable one because it's a problem that just never goes away. The saddest part, I think, about this whole thing, and I said this to David last year, I said, you know, I'm so happy that the the donations seem to be going up, but the problem's becoming bigger every year, and that saddens me. We've got to start looking at trying to alleviate the actual cause. And David put a challenge out last night to try and encourage us to get more CEOs to participate. Yes. Um, you know, can you just give us a bit of a, a take on that? Oh, I'm, I'm more than happy to do that because when I look at it, yes, wonderful group of people here tonight, but we had actually only 67. That's a little sad, the participation rate. So I would definitely go out and encourage it and simply put it to them. It's like sales. You can't give up. You've got to keep on asking. Fantastic. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Each year, the CEO Sleepout raises increasing amount of funds. However, sadly, every year, the number of people impacted by homelessness is also rising. The Sleepout is one way we can work to tackle this, but it would be great to see more people get involved and through working together, take a serious look at how we can turn the tide on the rising number of homeless people. I hope this episode has been eye-opening and can encourage others to participate in the future. After all, a waterfall begins with one drop and look what comes from that. 